Okay, so today is Saturday, October 24th, 2020, and this is the third entry in the RV10 video build log. So today I'll be continuing work on the vertical stabilizer rear spar assembly, uh, steps, uh, section 6-1, steps 4 through 8. Uh, so on the table there, you can see uh, in the background the rear spar uh, itself with the spar caps uh, clicoed in place. That's the work I did uh, in steps 1 through 3. Uh, and then in the foreground on the left, you can see the parts I'll be working with today. You can see the spar doubler. Uh, that's the big funny looking uh, part with the blue vinyl still on it. You can also see the uh, top hinge bracket doubler, uh, also blue with the, uh, the white label still on it. And then the, um, the triangular white powder coated parts are the top, middle, and bottom uh, rudder hinge brackets. So most of what I'll be doing today is uh, deburring uh, that, uh, that spar doubler, and then uh, match and final drilling uh, that part and the hinge brackets to uh, the spar assembly itself, and then coming back and countersinking uh, a lot of the holes on the spar doubler and uh, for the hinge bracket. So we'll get to work. I'll start the time lapse. All right, so uh, first thing I do there is peel the, the blue vinyl off and then basically start going after uh, the edges of the, the spar doubler with a file. Uh, part of the manufacturing process when these parts are you know stamped out of uh, sheets of aluminum it leaves kind of you know every few inches a little a little mark a little bump. Uh, it reminds me of like a sprue mark from a you know from plastic model airplanes but uh, I don't guess it's quite the same thing because these are not cast parts but Anyway, same idea, uh, and you just want to, you know, go get those off with something like a file uh, before you try and, you know, polish them on the 3M wheel on the grinder or anything like that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm also working on those inside uh, areas, which uh, that was kind of a pain to do with a file. And then I remembered I had this one inch, you know, 3M wheel that I could chuck in my drill. So I went and got that, worked on it with that for a while, back to the file. Uh, I did uh, pull out a file that, you know, a, a rounded file, so I could get some of those radius areas pretty well. And uh, you know, back and forth, file, drill, <laughs> uh, just sort of kept at it. Uh, then at some point, it dawns on me that I should chuck the uh, chuck the 3M wheel in my drill press, uh, and that way, you know, probably work a little more efficiently. Uh, ah, there we go. So yeah, go ahead and chuck this thing in the drill press and then uh, yeah, go at it for a while like that. I love the, uh, you know, the magnifier visor thing. I think it's a 4X magnifier that I uh, bought for working on the plane. Um, for one thing, I just think it looks so cool. Uh, but, you know, it also lets you see every little imperfection. And... Uh, you know, that's probably a blessing and a curse. Uh, you really can, you know, see any little, like say, any, any little imperfection or, you know, all the, all the machine marks and uh, tooling marks on the edge of these, uh, these parts. So uh, anyway, here I am on the, uh, the medium 3M wheel uh, on the grinder, uh, you know, smoothing out the edges. Uh, and then I move over to the fine wheel, I think it's called. The one on the right-hand side of the grinder is, you know, a little softer and, uh, you know, it's a real nice little polish on the edges. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, when I get done with that, I'll uh, take it back over and kind of finish it off with uh, some Scotch-Brite pad. I probably, if I didn't need the Scotch-Brite pad on the outside edges that I was able to use the, uh, the fine wheel on, uh, but I did need to get inside you know, in those inner edges uh, with something fine like the scotch Brite pad. And uh, I also have a little, a little holder, a little, you know, mandrel, if you call it that, that you can clip a little piece of scotch Brite pad uh, in and then chuck in a drill. And then when you spin it, it sort of, you know, flaps along and, and uh, you know, 
clean stuff up. I, I think I used that in a few minutes here. Uh, but yeah, basically just, uh, you know, uh, yeah, there it is. I cut a little piece of scotch Bright pad and put it in this, this, this little thing. And, you know, I can, that, that's what I finally kind of got into the, you know, the radius areas with. So, uh, just kept, kept at it, and, uh, getting that thing deburred. So the next step is going to be to, uh, you know, Coleco that that uh, doubler to the the front face, uh, the web of the spar, and uh, match drill. And it occurs to me, you know, I need to I need to peel the blue uh, vinyl off of this thing, which means uh, you know, I got to take all these Clecos out, uh, basically take the whole thing back apart, uh, peel the blue stuff off, and put it all back together. So, you know, I had peeled it off from the inside uh, area of it, you know, the other side of the spar, uh, because that's where I was working last weekend, you know, put the spar doublers on, but I guess I just, I left it on just to keep it protected uh, on the other face of it. So that's what I'm doing there. Uh, get that off of there. And now put it all back together, uh, but with the spar doubler on the front. So... I debated which way, you know, the spar doubler had kind of a pretty good bow in it, just like the the uh, spar caps did. I was trying to decide, you know, do I do I try and make it so the bow of the spar caps and the bow of the doubler cancel each other out? In the end, I I did it sort of the other way, and that's because I felt like it was probably better. I didn't want the 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 curve, the bow of the doubler, to be sort of pressing the the tips of the the ends of the doubler into the into the spar. I felt like it was better to to have sort of a smooth uniform uh, pressure along there just to just to not have a, a stress riser right at those points. And I and you know the whole thing now that it's all Clico together, uh, it doesn't really seem to have you know any real bow in it. Everything gets straightened out by the spar. So I found when I was trying to Clico the, uh, the rudder hinge brackets to the web of the spar, uh, basically I found that the larger Clico wouldn't fit through the hole and the smaller Clico uh, would go through but it wouldn't stay in. Uh, and the larger Clico is the right size, it's a number 30 hole, it's for a 1 8 rivet. Uh, but I guess the powder coating uh, that they put on those parts just sort of clogs up the hole just a little bit. So what I ended up doing was taking a 1 8 drill bit, uh, which I know is uh, 3.5 thousandths uh, smaller than the number 30, uh, not the 30 thousandths that I actually said in the last video. But anyway, uh, I know it's a little bit smaller. I was able to just sort of, you know, twist it through the hole with my fingers. Uh, my fingers did start getting sore, so I, I did finally chuck in a drill and just, you know, clean out the holes a little bit, and then I was able to uh, get them to uh, Clico onto the spar web. No problem to drill those out. Uh, I did have a little bit of confusion when it can't came to the uh, the upper uh, the upper hinge bracket and how those two pieces uh, you know there's there's two pieces that form that bracket uh, each piece has four holes in it so that's a total of eight holes and then there's the doubler uh, and it has some holes that coincide with the holes in the hinge bracket and then others that you know are are uh, you know additional holes for that that bigger piece well, the the plans, you know, in one place they tell you to, you know, drill all the holes through the through the hinge bracket. Another spot they would show you, you know, some dotted lines going through each of the parts, uh, kind of indicating only two of each of the four holes of the two pieces of the hinge bracket uh, were sort of involved there. And then, uh, you know, I actually flipped ahead. That's what I'm looking at right there. Uh, I flipped ahead in the plans and, you know, kind of really sort of scrutinized it and found a, you know, a, a bigger, uh, you know, where they're telling you how to rivet it. You know, there's a bigger drawing that shows the same kind of, you know, four lines instead of eight. Uh, but then they tell you to use eight rivets. And uh, you can tell by the length of the rivets that they're suggesting you use uh, that they're supposed to go through, um, you know, all the holes of the hinge bracket. So I did end up, you know, drilling all all 
four, all eight holes, uh, and then you know four more, I think, uh, for the for the doubler itself. But uh, that's that's why I kept going back to the plan, scratching my head, trying to figure out, okay, you know, how many am I supposed to be drilling? And like I say, I, I ended up uh, for the middle one, uh, the middle hinge bracket as well. I ended up you know flipping ahead to the to the rivet schedule to see what to do. So what I'm about to do here uh, is flip everything over and uh, final drill the holes that were uh, drilled to a 1 8 earlier. Uh, final drill those to a number 30 for a 1 8 rivet. Uh, most of the holes through the doubler, uh, through the spar web itself, and through the, uh, through the spar caps underneath. So it's basically you know, drill a bunch of holes, move the Clecos, drill a bunch more holes. So that's what I'm doing here. I tried using a number 30 reamer instead of a uh, drill bit, and uh, everything looks nice. So here I'm drilling uh, the hole, I'm match drilling the holes through the lower uh, rudder hinge bracket, uh, through the spar, and uh, the doubler, and this is these are holes for a number eight screw, and so you use a number nineteen drill bit. Uh, and this was a little bit uh, this was a little bit frustrating, mostly because when I started out, I was trying to use the pneumatic drill, and you know the the bit uh, you want to go through the steel of the bracket first, uh, and the pneumatic drill is good on speed and it's good on control, but it it doesn't have a lot of torque. And the drill bit, you know, bit in to the steel and just, you know, got hung. Uh, so I ended up using the electric drill instead so that I could just, you know, go slow with a lot of torque. Uh, and that worked out fine, but uh, it was just a little frustrating at first. So anyway, finish that up. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you drill a hole and now, and, you know, after you drill the number 19 hole, it's too big for a Clico. So you basically put a, a, a number eight, you know, number eight screw in the hole once you've drilled it. Uh, and then move on to the next one. But worked out fine. Uh, here I'm just cleaning up, uh, cleaning up those holes that I drilled for the number eight screws for that bottom hinge bracket. Uh, and then what I'll move on to next uh, is countersinking. So the last couple of steps for this section are to countersink uh, the number 30 holes that are below the upper attached bolt holes. Uh, and those correspond uh, to that area of the spar that's gonna be mounted up against, you know, what I'm calling, for lack of a better term right now, the aft uh, bulkhead of the tail cone. Uh, so you countersink for those, it's about 22 holes, I think. Uh, there are a couple that they tell you don't countersink, so I taped them off, uh, didn't wanna mess up, and then the last step, and the one that was the most uh, challenging, I'll say, or just seemed the most tedious, was countersinking for the number eight screws uh, that hold on that bottom hinge bracket. And you know the 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 thirty the number thirty holes for the one eighth rivet, those those were a piece of cake. I set up my uh, counter countersink micro stop countersink cage. Uh, set that up, you know, using a piece of scrap and then, and you know, just testing it with a bit and dropping a rivet in the hole and, uh, you know, it all, it, it, it came out perfectly. It all went great, uh, really easy and, you know, cut smoothly and everything. Uh, for the number eight screws, uh, you know, they even say in section five of the manual where they're talking about doing machine countersinking, they, they kind of tell you when you get as big as a, you know, things, things, the bigger things like a number eight screw and above are are kind of difficult. It's difficult to keep it from chattering. It's difficult to keep it, you know, round. Um, best bet is to to go at it, you know, at slow speed, high torque, uh, to remove most of the material, and then you know, right at the end, clean it up, uh, you know, at a higher speed uh, on the drill. And uh, you know, that's what I end up trying to do. I uh, I I spent a lot of time with a test, you know, with a piece of scrap getting it all set up, um, and then, you know, just uh, really, 
even even after I got it, you know, set up with the piece of scrap, I still uh, found myself really kind of, you know, working at it slowly uh, with the real plane. I would, you know, I would countersink, countersink, countersink. You know, test it with a screw. Nope, not quite there yet. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And uh, it all worked out fine. I got it done, but it was just seemed like a kind of a tedious. Uh, you know, it was the exact opposite of doing the ones for the rivets. Uh, thank goodness there were only four to do for the number eight screws uh, and not 22 of those. Uh, I'd still be doing it. So, yeah, here I am uh, still fiddling around with, <laughs> with the piece of scrap. Actually, there I'm just drilling the, drilling the uh, number 19 hole. So yeah, I think I'll uh, I'll just let myself finish it up here in silence. But it was a uh, it was a good day. Got a lot done, and uh, you know finished with page one. <laughs>